One of the dead giveaways of an amateur writer is the bad use of dialogue. Am I talking too much? Am I over explaining it through dialogue? Does it sound natural? Is it too much? Is it too little? That was Brenda Chapman. She is best known as the director of Brave and the Prince of Egypt. Plus, she has worked on many beloved films I'm sure you recognize. Hi, I'm screenwriter Pietro Schito and welcome back to Write for Animation. And today, you're about to learn some great insights that can help you craft better her dialogue. So here's Brenda Chapman. Well, to me, the script becomes less important as the story reels move forward. And the script becomes about dialogue and giving them the right dialogue because the story artists are taking it to that level where the description <laughs> is visually there. As a story artist, and that's how I got into writing, was that you always show it, you don't tell it. So that if there's something that you can visually put forward through a character's acting, body, you know, uh, emotion, that's the best way to do it because that's the most interesting. Sadly for me, watching a lot of animated films now, it's all just blah, 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 and snappy dialogue, and oh, it's, uh, I get tired, you know, and I want that quiet moment. I want those moments, you need those resting places. So that's my first thing is like, am I talking too much? Am I over explaining it through dialogue? Do we need dialogue to tie anything together? Do we need to punch up that dialogue? Does it sound natural? Is it too much? Is it too little? Is it, those are the things that I look for and try to find ways to say what I'm saying without having the character speak. Do you see yourself thinking about, okay, what is the structure of the scene? Where do I want to end? How do you think about a scene in general? It's sort of how a story artist is kind of on training ground to become a director. <laughs> it's you start with the beginning of the scene and what they need to learn by the end of the scene. For instance, the scene in Beauty and the Beast, I just had Bell Bandages Beast Wounds, and, and that was pretty much all I had for that. I wrote that scene and Bell is trying to be nice, but he's still the grumpy beast. I sort of put myself in Bell's shoes. Okay, if someone, I'm trying to help someone and they yell at me, how am I gonna react? You shouldn't have been in the West Wing. Well, you should learn to control your temper. By the end, they've reached this place they hadn't been before. This is what I need to happen in the scene. This is what I need to get out of this section. I always approach it less thinking about the dialogue than I am the intent of the scene. For instance, the argument between the mother and daughter after the archery contest. Yeah, I knew that was going to be a dialogue scene, but first it was like, okay, this scene is really going to show that they're not listening to each other. So that is how I approach that. Do you ever bother to ask what I want? No! Oh, you're acting like a child that they just want to say what they want to say. They're just waiting for each other to be quiet. I'd rather die than be like you! <gasps> Trying to be as natural as possible and also as brief as possible when you're talking, keeping it simple, but making it feel natural. So it's always good. That's why I love the story reel because you can put it up there and you can go, oh, that didn't sound right. Another great, great example that I've seen you share before comes from the rescuers down under. There was this character, Marahute, that she used to speak in the film. Thanks to you, now we have this beautiful scene. I was uh, kind of a junior story artist on that one. All of the other more seasoned story artists have been given the scene with Cody and the eagle, and they needed to get certain exposition through in that scene. So they put it round to, to several of the other artists, and she just kept coming off so pompous, you know, and so kind of dull. The directors were starting, they were trying to figure out what is it, you know, why isn't this working? All the story artists, we would always sit and make suggestions and whatever. I remembered a, a film I'd watched as a little girl on a wonderful world of Disney every Sunday. It was about indigenous American boy who was being bullied by these other little boys in his tribe. And he had bonded with this eagle. And I remember this eagle sitting on its little perch and whatever, and tilting its head and kind of communicating in a way that really played, but there was no dialogue. So I kept thinking of that eagle. And so I asked if I could give it a go. And then I started coming up with that idea and playing with it. So then I ended up boarding what I boarded and putting all of the exposition that was needed in Cody's mouth and letting the bird react or communicate just by attitude. My dad's gone too. 
that was the sequence that actually put me on the map at Disney as far as being a storyboard artist. Yeah, I'm very proud of that scene. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. And also it's, it's a lesson there is also to to don't don't be shy and, and propose yourself and take risks and, and explore. A well-placed silence can be just as impactful as a snappy line of dialogue. Before we get to a more heart-wrenching example, this time from the Prince of Egypt, I'd like to invite you to join our Patreon community to support the channel and get access to the Rife Animation Academy. If you want to take your storytelling skills to the next level and meet other storytellers like you, join today from writeforanimation.com academy. I'd love to see you in our next session. Now, Prince of Egypt. There were some executives, they wanted this joyous thing after the death of the firstborn, that they were free to go, you know, and it's like, woohoo, we're free. But the weight of what had just happened, all these people died, how you can celebrate that <laughs> was just didn't feel right. And then going in and getting that freedom from Ramesses after his son has just died. You and your people have my permission to go. We had to have that feeling of grief before we could move forward. We fought, Simon, Steve and I, all three fought very hard for that scene because this was Moses' brother. That was the backbone of that story was this brother's relationship. So there's no way Moses could just skip away. And it didn't feel right not showing how it affected him. So that scene where he crumples down the wall and cries, we didn't need the dialogue. You just felt what he was feeling. And even as he's returning, the beginning of the song where they do start to leave isn't joyous. It's slowly getting in and, and towards the end it's joyous, but it's given us distance as an audience from that emotional devastation, really. I'm, I'm having goosebumps. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that it's a great moment. And, and yes, it's great to hear and it's great that you fought for it. Thank you, Brenda. That was fantastic. Keep improving your storytelling skills by clicking on this playlist I've curated just for you. I'm Pietro and this is Rife Animation and I'll see you in the next video.